Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick overview review and a giveaway for this thing here. This is the latest version of the ELRS or Express LRS radio system from Beta FPV. Now, if you're not sure what Express LRS is, I'll put a link down below to this video. This explains it all and talks about what it is. It's a vendor independent protocol. So rather than have to use Spectrum compatible receivers with Spectrum radios, or free sky compatible receivers, whether that's AWCST, Access, whatever, with your radio, Fataba receivers, with FAST, whatever it is, you don't have to worry about that. Basically, if you have one of these little things, you snap it into the back of your radio, and then you can use both modules and also receivers from any manufacturer, in theory, because it's all ELRS. Now, ELRS went to version 2 uh, rather recently, and this latest radio from Beta FPV is a 1 watt version uh, of a radio that I had for a little while. This was the kind of the, the 500 milliwatt version. This is the 1 watt version. Now, I'm not sure why you need 1 watt of power. Uh, the 1 watt is only available in the 2.4 gigahertz. 1 watt is illegal in most places. And to be honest, on 100 milliwatts here in the UK on 2.4 gig, 100 milliwatts is going to get you about one and a half kilometers away easily. So uh, it's useful, I guess, for those people that can and really want to push longer range. However, for longer range, I would actually go for the 868 or the 915 megahertz version of the radio that's going to do that for you. Now, this latest version has refresh rates from 50 to 500 hertz, like pretty all the other ones from Beta FPV. RF output power on this new one is either 2550, 250, 500 or 1 watt. RF output power goes from 25 milliwatts to 50 to 250 to 500 milliwatts to 1 watt. Inside is a little bit different from the earlier ones. There's much bigger heat sinks and this now also supports something that I've introduced called the backpack function. Backpack function allows wireless communication between the ELRS radio and other FPV related devices for command and control. So this sounds like it's their version of the TBS cloud. Uh, if you want to see the TBS cloud, what that kind of idea is, I'll put a link down below. Backpack future apparently is going to be added to the 500 milliwatt version of the module in future. Dip switches are on the back. Uh, they're used to access updating and backpack updating features. And you can also use those to pop it into normal operating mode. Interestingly, as well as having these switches on the back, there are still buttons inside. Although it's a little bit harder to get inside this thing. It's like the little torque screws that you need to take out. You pop those two out and the whole thing can open up. But in reality, hopefully, we're never going to have to open it up to access those buttons to do anything. In terms of the integration with the ELRS project, uh, it still seems to be a little bit patchy between Beta FPV and the ELRS project itself. Now, when they initially brought out the white version of this, uh, the OLED screen firmware that was used in the module was developed by Beta FPV rather than using the one that was being developed by ELRS. Uh, the button control was very basic. I talked about that in that video review I did of that original module. It looks like the ELRS project has taken on. Uh, so in 2.1 of ELRS, this is actually going to be supported. This module is supported right now, looking at the website for the ELRS project uh, from 2.0. So you can just hopefully use it like that. However, to use all the doohickeys, looks like we're going to need 2.1 to access the full functionality of the cute screen. I do like the OLED screen in this. I have the full size crossfire here and it's just incredibly useful to do things like change the settings and stuff. So hopefully that's going to improve and hopefully the closer working relationship between the hardware vendors like Beta FPV is going to continue to get better with the project so it's a little bit more seamless. If vendors keep taking the ELRS code and changing it and modifying it to do something new and unusual with their hardware then that kind of goes against the kind of letter and spirit of what the ELRS project is all about. However, if you would like to have a go at this because I don't need two of these. I've already got one um, and I'm definitely not going to be using one watt here in the UK. So if you would like to get your hands on this and have a go with the ELRS stuff, then usual stuff. Like, 
comment, subscribe. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. An awful lot of the viewers that watch the channel haven't hit the subscribe button, so please make sure you do and support the time I spend making the videos. And I will pull the names out of the hat in probably about a week's time. So do stay tuned for that. Uh, but Beta FPV continue to be one of the very active manufacturers of ELRS hardware. I'm interested to see the next range of smaller radios that are coming out at the moment that have ELRS built in too. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.